Okay, here we are. Hello. You were about to take a nap and now it's time for my stream. Is this a stream dream? Possibly. Try holding your breath for 10 minutes and if you can't do that, then it's probably a stream, uh, stream dream. Okay, let's see what we're up to. Let's open up our thing. Let's run wmake. We should just clean it and then run wmake. And let's check our notes. What are my notes here? These are some kind of cryptic notes, but I kind of read the art of assembly and I think part one of the um, graphics black book of programming or something. I don't know. I read them and I got some tips. So we're going to try and implement those. So let's go to desktop. But um drive c all right so we're going to go to drive c code but we're just going to look at our make file and see how we're invoking nasm um we go to see if we're adding debug stuff to it um now i did look in the nasm uh manual and we probably want to add ox which would kind of make the instructions a bit shorter if possible. Um, and there's G and F. Let's open up Firefox and go back to the NASM page, which is often down more often than not. Sure, whatever. I have full cookie protection. All right, docs, HTML format. Um, let's just quickly look for the debug um, information. So what app formats do we have? We need G and NASM dash H will tell us um, what what outputs we have. So let's do NASM H. Uh, let's pipe that into more. F G capital F. Um, What debug format are we using for Whatcom? I think it's ELF, right? Hang on a second. Let's see what Whatcom is outputting. Code, um, object, bot. Where does the debug stuff go? Hey, Misaki, what's up? Where did I put it? The debug stuff, test.sim. Yeah, that's elf. So we're just going to use elf32. So gf elf32. Why? What did you do with your tabs? Um, we'll see if this works and I'm not sure if it's going to combine it. Um, the other thing we need to look at is whether that actually gives us object bot state dot We need to delete that. Delete it. 
unrecognized debug format L32. Dwarf? Wait, no. Is this depending on what we're doing? What output format dependent? Okay, so it's output format dependent. What is our output format? I think it's... Bin? Are we doing bin? Let's check. Um, open up our thing. Object. Obj. Obj is that. So the output for obj is boreland. I guess. F boreland? Does Whatcom support that? We'll see. Um, is there any other thing than obj we could use? There's bin. Elf32. Yeah, it only looks like we're going to have ball. Okay, let's try Boland. Boreland. And we'll see what happens. Okay, let's see. Code. Object. But. So there's debug information in state.obj, I'm guessing. Let's just open it. So it has a bunch of junk there, like send new buffer and printf. So let's see if that's gone into our um, symbols file. So let's do break, run, code, functions. Let's see. S for state. All right, that's loud. Um, file. So I guess this just isn't going to work, perhaps? But do we need to use Borland debugger if we're not debugging the C stuff? Um, at the start, I used Insight. Um, Insight debugger. No. Um, let's look at the FreeDOS packages. Let's see what it has. Insight. Debug. There's the debug command. Insight debugger. Um, DOS. Is it here? Well, it loads symbols. I mean, that looks a lot easier for me to understand. We might as well just download this. Um, yep, insight. And I think it's insight.com. So let's just drop this in our drive C, I guess. And let's see if we can use that to debug stuff real quick. I know we're getting off topic, but Um, so what do we have? What are the commands? Oh, there's probably like documentation in the, in the thing I downloaded, right? That's where old software keeps documentations. Read me. 
Okay, it's like a info file. Um, Insight.rus. Yeah, I don't speak Russian. Insight license.ing. Okay, so there's only Russian documentation for this. Um, oh, this isn't the latest version. Oh, okay, I got the Russian version, it looks like. Koz teaches me Russian. I don't want to learn Russian. Koz was at the Paris Museum um, yesterday and he was showing me all the cool stuff they had there. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, read me, doc. Insight.txt. Okay. All right, here we go. Insight program. Can we load the debug symbols? Um, symbols. No. All right. Well, if we're not going to have symbols either way, what's the button to get the menu? How do I open the menu? Why did I just close the, okay. Menu. How do I get to that menu? Shift A, escape or enter. Hang on a second. Main menu can be activated with Alt. No, that's not what I have. F10. Wait, no, that did work. All right. Cool. Um, so. That's pretty cool. Do we have like, no, we don't have debug symbols. Okay. That's sad. Unless like, no, that's not, that's sad. Um, let's search up NASM debug symbols, what com. Like the linker should include the symbols, no? I don't want to go back to the page for the Whatcom linker stuff. That'll, that'll be pain. Uh, we could actually just look at the strings in the, in the file. You know what? Let's also just dump the text file for how to use insight in the C drive. All right, test.sim. Do we have our assembly? We don't have our ASM run. Didn't we have that before? No, that's test.sim. So there's ASM run. We don't have our state things. So the other thing we could probably do is just make these symbols global. So let's go to our, do we still have the, no, we don't, have, I closed DOS box. Okay. Um, if we do state code bot state dot assembly. Um, see how we have global, we can just put global, but what would also be interesting if we could trigger the debugger just by inserting, um, int 13, that's something I read about, but I'm not sure if we can do that. So let's try it anyway, or I'm not sure what comes debugger just, okay, let's try and use it. 
Is there a way to invoke it with like, no, okay. So we want to go to assembly run, I guess. I really would like to know if we can just start at a specified location. You are hungry? Why? Let's just quickly read the- I'll read the help file. Um, I guess in another thing, another stream. Um, no, uh, off stream. I guess the thing is, is that I don't like UE debuggers. Um, because I have to navigate through everything. Is there just, oh, there's a command thing. Um, oh, so can we like do break um, ASM run? Oh, we can. That didn't work. Oh, because it couldn't connect to host. All right, so we there might be some relief there. If okay, let's also just try the int thirteen thing, just to see what happens. Put an int thirteen here. Um, then we're going to do w make, and we're also going to start the test code. I think. test server. There we go. Um, so let's try bot. Let's see if it crashes with the int 13 thing. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, but what if we attach a debugger? Um, what? Int 13? Did I write int 13? Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Also, I forgot what the damn button is for Whatcom to switch to break. It's not F9. I'm really gonna have to sit down and read the damn manual for this debugger. Okay. All right, it's fine. Alt X to quit. Um, I don't know why it's beeping. Let's turn the beep off. Actually, no, let's turn system off. Just be quiet. So in 13, it should be in three, I think. All right, WD bot, run. Oh no, that just crashes everything. Okay, well, whatever. It doesn't work. All right, so we have that kind of figured out. Mostly. Um, warnings. Debug. I'm not sure what the warnings are about. Um, I think there's a thing for NASM to enable warnings. W and W. So there's two W's. Why? Why is there two W's? W plus error. We're not going to enable wearer because 
that's for small haired people. All right, so we need just capital W. It's still open. All right, so capital W. See what it thinks about that, huh? It doesn't, it doesn't think much about it. Ah. I'm always going to get confused by the use of slashes. All right, no warnings there. All right. What else is in my notes? All right. Um... The other thing I read is about illegal infinite instructions and stuff. Apparently you can just, you know, if you read through the stack, you can probably find the um, stored address of a function or something. That's pretty cool. Um, global labels. I talked about that. All right, let's do some programming. All right, so let's try and fix this code. I don't know if that's big enough on screen. Can you read it? I'll make it bigger. So we have this code here where we have some local variables and we have some packet positions. Um, and it's a state machine and that's kind of cool. Um, now what we could do is actually use NASM's locals thing in order to name stuff. So we might do that, but first, the more urgent thing is that this copy function that I wrote is kind of trashy. Um, I spent like way too long thinking about this. So we have here, I mean, we're not even gonna cycle count, but like accessing a memory location for every instruction isn't great in a loop. Um, that's okay. So where does the loop start? I think it, it starts at state append line. So this whole thing is a loop kind of, but yeah. So we have a loop here that copies a single byte and then it does all these checks to check that there's still stuff remaining. And then um, also it quits if we run out of space, which isn't ideal. So, you know, the, the other thing is that like, um, if we do find a uh, new line or whatever, then we do kind of have to bail, but I think we can actually kind of do this. Um, the first thing we wanted, like the ideal code that we would have is like, um, let me just go down here, move AX and then the value of the new line, which is that, I think it's AL actually. And then we um, move CX with the maximum amount. So that would be the minimum of um, the remaining of each buffer. And then we will repeat, um, SCAS, I think. Let me just remember what the SCAS instruction does. I think it scans. So we don't actually want to repeat it. What we want to do is, um, we want to, I think, uh, no, we don't want to scars, but we do want to load, check and then store maybe. Yeah, so it would be like, 
Um, load S. Um, load S check and set flag. Um, store S. And then loop. Um, if it was not N. So we will include the N in our buffer. I think. No. We will just break. I guess. Um, ah, this is a bit confusing. But the first thing I kind of want to do. Is just look at this. We check how much is remaining. And then what we want to actually do is tighten this loop a bit more. So instead of checking how much is remaining each time, we want to um, have state um, copy. There we go. Uh, I think that's actually not correct. Okay, this is a bit hard to think about. So we have our state append line here. And so we check how much we have left, which is okay. And we want to take the smallest from either of those. Um, but that uses the remaining register. So we want to do min bp plus six bp plus two and that's the amount to copy and then do copy here is going to um copy um min bytes so cx equals um the minimum of either of those and then we're going to copy bytes um, but we will stop if we find new line, then we want to subtract, um, copied amount from, um, both remainders. So that seems reasonable. Um, and that way we will have this as a better loop. Um, the problem here is that the remainder, um, we would have to remember how much we were going to copy as a variable. Otherwise, like when we get the final value, it's not actually the amount copied, but the amount left to copy. So we have our CX min. We would probably need another variable for this, which isn't ideal. So maybe this code is good enough. I mean, I would rather it not be a loop like that. And I do want to get a little bit better at programming this. So um, CX is going to have the amount to copy and then we would do something like um, LODs. X86 LODs. And then um, STUS. I thought the SCAS thing copied stuff. No. Yeah, so we will do LODs um, compare equals, uh, wait, what is LODs LODs to? Um, I think it's AL. Yeah.
Oh, we do have more registers than I was thinking of, kind of. Um, so LODs, um, so we do LODs, then we do com um, compare AX zero A. Um, and then we do stars. We do jump if equal to done copy. Then we do stars, then we do loop. And then we do done copy. Um, done copy doesn't mean that we've actually copied everything. We would have to, com we'd have to check if we've copied all. So we would want to compare CX to zero. To see if we've run out of space. Actually, we can tell if we've run out of space just because we, um, Um, this would actually be bufferful because we've hit that after the loop. Um, done copy would be there. So we do the copy that would be, um, uh, bufferful. And in both of these, we want to, um, fix remainder. Hmm. Should we perhaps... When we calculate the um, amount, we could just um, jump zero to buffer full and then move this code um, to there, to after the supposed copy. Um, oh yeah, we have the um, copy loop here. And fixed remainder would be to buffer full would be in both cases, we would need to fix the remainder. Yeah, we could just, after we're done copying, we could just, um, we could just check the um, buffer ends. We could fix remainder. Um, so this would be end copy, fix remainder, check buffer. There, that could be okay. Now, would that work better? See, the only reason that we would probably want to do that. What is it incrementing and decrementing there? Oh, that's because it's also updating the pointers. So the big benefit here would probably be that we could use registers. Like, um, we could actually just, you know, yeah, we could, um, in with the registers here, we could assign this to, um, DI and this could be SI. Um, and then not sure where we could put these, if we could fit these in registers, but that would save some space on the stack. What's SI doing there? Move SI line buffer length. What? 
Oh, that subtracts it. It's a bit weird. Oh, no, I see. Um, but we only need, like, the SI and DI for this section here. Or we would probably, no, we'd probably still need them as variables. Maybe. This is complicated code. Too complicated. So we have packet position. And then over here. I mean, we could just temporarily push some stuff, right? We could probably refactor um, this into its own function here. Yeah, we could probably work that a little bit, but I would like to try this. So, um, let's do that. Kind of, we will work on doing the register part later. I'm not sure where we would put the remainders. We could use a, um, no, we couldn't use an 8-bit register for that. That would be a little bit silly. But okay, so um, yeah, let's try this. So we have our check packet remainder. We would put that over here. Um, and we also, hmm. Is there even a point to doing something different based on the remainder? And let's put this jump equals state thing there and comment that out. Well, we should probably just uncomment all of this, right? Um, We don't need to jump to that either. We can just fall through that. So we get the minimum there. Um, if it's a zero, we jump to, I guess, end copy. Looks kind of cool. Yeah, maybe we should indent the, the labels like that. That could be an idea. Um, buffer pull. Or I guess that would be, yeah. If we reach the end of the loop, then the buffer is full. And then we would want to check the remainders. Although in both cases, we need to fix the remainders. Hmm. What is this fix remainder operation anyway? Fix remainder would be to read remainder decrement by no, because CX is the amount left. Um, hmm. So, like, if we have a buffer of our, if we have a remainder of 128, and then we've decided that we want to copy, and wait, no, 128, but we're going to only copy 64, um, and then we only copy 32. That means, sorry, we only copy 24, say. That would mean that the amount that we have copied is 40. Um, 
which is fine for one remainder because the smallest one has that, but it's not okay for um, the other remainder, which is larger. So the only really way to contextualize this number here is remembering that it's the minimum of one of those. Hmm. And CX counts down or it can count up maybe. Is that useful? No, because that, that would be a backwards copy, I think. Wait a second. Um, the direction flag. Yeah, the direction flag uh, handles the direction of copy. Although... Load byte. And so we have loop, which does the copying. So we have CX and then we have loop. So we'd probably want to count up to a value, which would mean we'd need a separate register, right? It's like we have fundamentally two different um, values here. Yeah, so we would need two registers. Although, we could calculate the, rem we could calculate the remainders by simply um, subtracting two pointers because we know how much we've used. So maybe we could do some pointer arithmetic. That could work. So like we actually, the remainder here, the packet remainder and the packet and the um, line buffer, uh, the packet remainder and line buffer remainder, that's the end. But when subtracting from the start, give us the amount copied? No, because we might resume this. Um, So what registers do we have? Let's see what Wikibook says. We have um, AX, CX, DX, BX. Um, CX we're using, AX we're using, DX and BX. But those are, oh, we don't need those. Um, so we could use DX and BX. Um, so if we go back here, um, so what would we use DX for? Why am I escaping all those letters? What? Well, I'm a bit late to that one, aren't I? Um, so DX and BX, we could use those. Yeah, we should use those. So we only need one, which would be the Delta. Um, so what we could do. Hmm. It'd be a delta, but only to like one of them. 
we could put the remainders in DX and um, BX. And then compare those to zero. Um, <coughs> we decrement each of those and compare those. Yeah, we could probably do that. Um, but then how would we get our condition for, um, one of those being zero. I guess, I guess if the formula is that DX minus BX equals DX, would that be correct? If, if removing one of them has No, that wouldn't work. Cause if one of them is zero, it just give back. No, we could use bit twiddling for that. Couldn't we? Um, if one of them is zero and we end it. So like uh, 128 and zero, that gives us a zero and then a zero and 128 gives us zero. So if one of them is zero, then and we bitwise and them together. Um, then we definitely have um, an empty buffer. Although, no, that should be correct, right? Because we're not going to have a zero otherwise, unless Like if we do zero and FF, um, trying to think, is there, a, is there a time when we would get zero, um, by bitwising two things? Because bitwise implies that, um, if one of them Okay, just kind of walking this down. The truth table of a bit y, uh, of uh, of and is where the two values are one, right? So if we do zero and some value, then it would be um, zero because they're not both the same value. Wait, if we do 128 and 128, one and one, one and zero, zero and zero, zero and one. Yeah, that seems fine to me. Okay, so we don't need the remainder. Um, so yeah, let's just dump that. Um, so the line buffer is going to be DX, sorry, DI, and DX, and then we can remember the other one as SI and BX. BX. SI. And so our copy loop would be, our test would be, um, and, um, BX DX jump zero. So our check for that is just an and. That seems efficient. 
Um, so we load that. And if we've done the copy, we can just jump to state null terminate. Um, and then we will have to handle registers from there on. That seems fine. Um, so we jump to state null terminate. Now, how would the buffer get full without copying? Is this even possible to reach this jump? We'd have to start with a packet of zero. If we get a packet of zero, okay. Um, we'll just have that as buffer full. And then we have um, jump zero. Now, here we do deck BX and deck DX. So we do LOD stores, deck DX, deck um, DX. We're going to copy um, each of those, I think. And then we will compare and jump. No, that's not right. Should we copy? We don't need to copy the new line. Okay, so we're going to do LODs. Compare AL. Um, so LODs should be decrementing the um, BX. And then stars decrements DX. And we will then check if the buffer is full. And if it's not, jump not zero, we'll do a copy loop. We don't need to fix the remainder. Um, we will compare if um, DX is zero, then we will jump to the um, We'll jump to get packet if there's no packet left. Actually, we can just do the compare this way, can't we? Compare, compare BX. Um, if BX is empty, we will just jump um, to get packet. Compare DX zero. And if DX is empty, we will jump to state quit. So that's our new loop, kind of. AX, um, DX. So it'd be BX, DX, DI, um, DX. No, SI, DI. Okay, so let's just read through this. See where we're using that. Um, if it's zero, we jump to buffer full. Um, if it's not zero, we still have remaining, so we just copy more. And then after state null terminate, we are going to Uh, we have state and alternate and we have next line. So these three things should probably be put somewhere else. Or not, we could push stuff. Yeah, because this goes here, then here, then here. This is uh, three things happening in a row. So we could just push whatever we're not using. 
So uh, push BX, push, um, what are we calling that? Push BX, push SI. You know, we could just, hmm, actually, no, we can clobber these because we're using the, don't push me. How dare you, blocked. We can clobber these because we are using the line buffer. Um, so move DX line buffer, no, DI line buffer. Um, yeah, so we're using DX here. We can just use CX actually, move CX. Then we can sub CX with, um, wait, what's, what's BP plus six? What are we doing here? Null terminating. So when we null terminate here, we can just move, um, we don't need to do any of this. We can just move, um, I think it's DS, what, zero. Let's click on this LWN. Uh, making O temp file atomic, all right, fine. Did this get merged? Uh, so let's just talk about it. Summarize it for me. So when we do when we do null terminate, we do we can just move byte zero to DS because DS is a pointer, isn't it? No, DI. DS DI byte zero. Um yeah. And then we push DX, which is the length, and DI, which is the destination. Wait, DX is the amount remaining, not the amount we copied. So to get that, we would probably want to put something in CX, which would be to move CX um, line buffer Len, and then we want to sub CX DX, which is the amount we copied, I think. But we can just, um, we don't need to handle CX for that, do we? not handle it. We don't need to worry about it. Then we can over here, we would move DI word line buffer. Oh, we need to do that here. Move DI word line buffer. Um, should probably be state print. So DI, we reset that. Um, no, we set it to zero. We set the current byte to zero. We overwrite the R. Then we move DI to line buffer. Um, then we move um, CX with line buffer length. Then we subtract what we've copied. I think, yeah. Then we push CX and DI. And then after that, we're going to jump pen line and we're going to also move, um, you know, what we all could also do here in, also, in order to reset stuff is move DX line buffer length. Um, and then 
uh, sub CX and DX. We could swap. No, should we swap it? Swap CX, DX. I think there's a swap instruction. Exchange. Is that in 8086? Eighty eighty six exchange. Apparently. So we use, um, we put the current buffer in CX, then we subtract DX from it. Wait, what are we doing? All right, so DX has the remainder, and then we copy the line buffer. We get the length. So we want to subtract the remainder from the line buffer. So like, if our line buffer is length 10, and we've copied two, then we would do 10 minus two, and that gives us no. Um, we would have had copied two. No, the remainder is two. So 10 minus two is eight, yeah. And so we would do sub, um, we would move, we have DX, which is the remainder. Uh, we move CX with the line buffer length. You know, we can just move AX to be, um, to have the current DX thing. Then we can remove DX to have the line buffer length. And then we subtract, yeah, we subtract um, AX and DX. And then we push DX and then we have AX and DX set back up. And then we just um, jump to state append line. Um, let's read through this again. All right, let's see if this compiles. Label alone on a line without colon might, okay, yeah, whoops. State append line dot buffer for. Do I need to put this down here? Was my idea bad? State label alone online without a colon might be an error. It has a colon. There's a colon there. Hmm. Stores copy loop. Wait, what? Symbol stores copy loop not defined on 96. What is happening here with my code? Do I need to remove the dot there? What is happening? Label alone online. What is happening? Label alone online without a colon. It has a colon. There's a colon there. Label alone online 
label a loan on a line without a colon. Label loan on line without a colon. Bruh. Without a trailing colon. Do I, have I forgotten about what a colon is? Oh, shit. I didn't mention that it was LODS SB, That's something. Could that be it? That it, that's what it was. Um, weird. Buffer full. Okay, and we have dot buffer full there. Let's see if this works, huh? Yeah, no, nah, not quite. Um, not exactly what we want. Incoming one, two, three, seven, eight. So we've, uh, Managed to mess up quite a bit there, but it does seem like we've copied data. Um, let's just review our code to see if there's anything absolutely wrong. How about if the buffer is full, then we quit. Yeah. No, so it's not reaching that. So, but it isn't freezing. So this code could be working. What if we, instead of terminating it, we put a byte one? Will that ruin my day? Koto, how do you like my cool assembly loop? Yeah, so terminating it isn't helping. Let's see how we've mess this up. Should this be DI and this be AX and this be DI and this be AX and that goes to CX? What, what's happening? Do you like my trick for checking if two values are zero? Yeah, AX is that, then we push DI. Hmm. What if we just push 12? Um, it's the trick up here. To check if two registers are zero, I use AND. Sorry, to check if one is zero. What the fuck is that? 
What if you push 12 there? You think I'm messing up with my printfs? I want that 1, 2, 3, 7, 8 to be 12. Alright. It has any bit set. So like if one is 12 and one is zero, I want it, I want um, either of them, I want the result to be zero. I think this is how it works. Why are you confused? I'm confidently wrong about this, I think. Like, um, let's say you, we have two operations where we have tw one register is 12 and one is zero. 12 and zero is zero. But if the other one is 12, then it's still zero. So I'm checking the remainder, like I have two buffer lengths. Um, so like if we have buffer length, one has 12 bytes left, one has eight bytes left. Then if we do 12 and eight, um, of course this does seem like a risky game if you think about it. Um, because if you do zero B one Oh one and zero B O one zero, it's going to end up with zero. So that does seem like, um, it does seem like I have actually written a bug there. Which I didn't think about, but that's okay. Um, if you have a better way for me to think about that, like, um, how to check if they're both zero. So I think I've managed to just kind of write a bug there, but I'm also confused about this. So push DI and then AX, AX DI. What we will do now is actually just compare uh, then just or and check if the, I want to check if one is zero, not both. Check if one register is zero. I mean, is it, it could, it, hmm. I think the other way is to like do, um, we would subtract one from the other, then check that it's the other value, I think, but that wouldn't like, if we do 10 minus two, 10 minus zero, and that's zero minus 10, um, then that would be negative now. We could do 10 plus zero and zero plus 10. If we add two together, 
if we add um, two together, then check that the result is, well, no, because that's not associative. Like 10 plus zero equals zero does not work. Ah, we need, we need an operation that isn't um, associative. Um, but says like, um, if any bits are set in either of these registers, I suppose two operations that, um, have an accumulator. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that while I get mad at this printf thing. change that di to si and we'll just double check that um si and we'll push 10. let's see if um that works That's uh, going to pop the wrong thing. Oops. Right, I've messed up my printf, I think. Move di line buffer. Let's just move dx line buffer length. Um, and we will forget about um, calculate length from dx. We'll forget about that. Is that like it would, would Zor do this? I'm trying to think. Um, no, that's kind of like, um, oaring them kind of a little bit. In this case, Zor is like oaring. In other cases, it's like gnawing. And sometimes it's just boring. What is happening here? Push SI, push 10. Oh, I'm not null terminating SI. Uh, push DI, push 10, pop DI. But we do null terminate it. Okay, we'll worry about that for now. So here we have this, um, but we're never getting to buffer full. So all my junk here should not actually matter. Um, what? That's not good. Uh, I'm not sure why that's happening. Move destination index DX. Print F is bothering me a little bit. Uh, 
RC7. So it is kind of overfilling, overflowing. Oh no, because we do have the end there. Um, shit. Just unconditionally jump. All right, that's kind of okay. Maybe. And so we will have move AX DX. Um, sub AX DX. I think that would, oh, no, it's negative. Um, ah. Move AX line buffer length. Sub AX DX. And move DX line buffer length. Um, ah, move CX. Um, DX. Move DX line buffer length. Sub. So now we have CX and DX. Um, what am I doing here? Move AX DX to get this new value. Wait, move AX line buffer length. Um, So then we have the length and then the remaining. Um, so then we do sub AX DX. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move CX DX, sub AX CX, move DX AX. That's a bit of juggling, but it might work. Let's see. No, that didn't work. Why am I having such trouble with this? Um, DX is the remainder. So we want to do line buffer minus remainder to get the, to get the length. Line buffer length. Um, then we sub AX DX and then we move DX. We give that the line buffer. There, that subtract AX DX. Subtract DX from AX. That seems reasonable to me, unless sub works the other way around, which would be silly. Okay, that does seem to work. That's kind of spaghetti there. So we get the line buffer length. We put it in CX, then we subtract DX, and then we move, okay. So that seems to work fine. So now up here, we have our compare thing there. And then we have our two things that check so can we 
look this up. Um, x86 compare. Does compare clear the flags register? Then we have the x86 test instruction. Ah, uh, it's a and. Does... No, that's test. Kind of pathetic if you ask you. Um, multiple compares. This feels pathetic. Um, so what we could do is compare BX zero We could flip this around actually. If we put compare BX zero up here, jump state dot get packet. I see why I wrote this originally this way. So we compare BX zero there, compare DX zero. Um, and if that isn't zero, we jump to copy loop. And then we jump to state append line. So this might work. Kind of? The register is wrong. Oh, that's AX. So we want to use CX for that. Oh, and I've messed up the stack there, have I? Oh, no, I didn't. So why is the first... Why is it doing... Why is it doing uh, a message with that? Why? I don't need to add the word there, do I? Um... Kodo, explain, please. If AL is zero, I haven't set that to zero before doing all this, have I? No, I probably should. I don't know if I need to Zor axe. Does Lods SB set the upper register? Let's see what this tripod website has to say. Um, 
Yeah, so that doesn't set AH. Let's do move AH zero. Put that there. Should probably put it there maybe? I'll put that there. Okay. Um, So what did the old code do? If I just undo everything. So undo one, undo 20. So this is what I started with this morning. So welcome to the test server is getting missed. Why would that happen? It seems that it is copying something, but the, it is splitting, it has reached that, but is it not copying it right? Um, hmm. The value certainly isn't set in um, whatever register it is. What if we just push 10 for now? Um, and just try and print that and move that junk. All right, so it certainly is getting to state print and the only way to do that is if it's loading stuff properly. So the only thing I can think of is that it hasn't set the line buffer and line buffer length correctly. Which shouldn't be the case. Unless we need to put it here. And we can get rid of the stack allocation there. Perhaps this will work. Yay! I think we can replace the compares with zero with just test. What does test do? Let's see if this person has test.htm. Um, yeah, okay, so actually test is just compare, but bitwise. All right. Um, so we now use beautiful registers. Um, packet lane, dx, uh, si equals packet. Hey, Procyon 60, what's up? I think you were here last stream. Um, line buffer. I 
I've moved things to registers. So my question here is why is this broken? Oh, I didn't save my registers for my call to send packet there. All right, so we've actually done pretty good. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is just kind of induce some errors, perhaps. We will have to do that later, but now we can just, um, let's just set the line buffer to be smaller. and see what happens. Yeah, it quits with seven. So what we wanna do is the line buffer is smaller. Um, we want it to instead um, just, I don't know what we wanna do. Um, we want to jump to a state where we just um, don't, uh, we want to, I guess we will do an incomplete packet. I mean, for now, quitting is okay, I guess. Uh, variables. Hmm. I'll remove that easier print thing. Although one thing we could do is just have the printf message in line. Although we would have to jump over it. So let's not do that. So when we get a line that is too long, should we try and read it anyway? Or should we skip it? Uh, we'd have to skip it anyway. We'd have to do some amount of skipping. Um... Hmm. Um, I think it might be just worth skipping the line and writing that we've dropped the line. Um, but that would imply that like down in this section, this is conditional. So we're in this loop. Um, I think we could have a separate code path here actually. Although that would necessitate um, now let's have a separate state. We're going to have state skip line. And so if we somehow run out of space, we will switch to the skip line state. That seems reasonable. Now in the skip line state, all we will do is rep scas b zero times zero a, I think. Um, Hmm. 
we will move um, the BX register to CX. And then we will move, we will move um, CX back to BX, I think. So this will just get us to that point. And then we can just jump back to state append line. So this should um, put the packet remainder into CX, then can, then we will scan for the end of line and update the packet length accordingly. And then we would jump back to state append line. We could just have that as an inline thing. But the other thing is that um, if we do, um, if CX equals zero, then we've actually run out of packet and we need to um, Um, so if we do compare CX zero, we would jump if it's not zero. Otherwise we will, um, Hmm. If we jump to state, state get packet, then it's going to jump back to a pen line. Which is fine actually. Um, which means we could probably actually inline this as long as we don't change the buffer for DX. What we could actually do here is, um, yeah, so when we do state get packet, uh, when we append a line, we will check if the packet is empty. If it's zero, we will go get a new packet. And um, we will check if um, the line buffer is full. Um, if it's not, if it is full, we will just try scanning for that. Um, and No, we need to make this its own state. That's too complicated. There we go. So if it's zero, we will jump back to state get packet. Otherwise we will have to reload the line buffer and then jump to state a pen line. So this seems reasonable. Rep scasby zero times zero A. Um, maybe I need to move that into AX. Move um, A low zero times zero A. So let's test this by making um, the packet size 33. Um, it might be 34. So we get stuff that's 33, but not stuff that's more than that. And if we set it back to 5.1.12, then 
And we should get everything. Nice. But with 33, we don't get the ping. What? Why? We don't get the ping. So something's gone wrong there. We're not fetching a new packet there. Actually, it seems like what's happening is that if we do hit the skip line state, it freezes. Hmm. Is it, it's not actually frozen though. Cause I can quit. Um. So we have CXBX, we have ale. Let's just check that SCSB does what I think we can just use scas08 and rep repeats until we run out um, instruction inspect expected. Oh. Huh? At ES? Do I need to set the ES register? What is happening here? SCSB, ESDI. Am I using the wrong rep? Okay. Rep not equal SCAS zero A. All right. Move a low um, line feed. Wait, does that mean that that was the error? Let's try this. Do I like assembly better than Python? I no. Rip me. Rip me. So what does rep does? Repne scas M8. M8 isn't immediate 8, is it? Or it has M8 for memory 8? Alright, so Repne should now work with scas. B. But it's still like, if we just jump to skate, skate, state skip line, that's going to make an infinite loop we can't quit from, yeah? 
Yeah, correct. So it is actually jumping back to a state. Python to assembly. Absolutely not. So jump Z state get packet. And if state, oh, the state get packet. Yeah, okay. State get packet is not going to preserve our registers. So we're going to have to do push um, SI push DI push DX and we're going to push BX. We're going to push those and then we're going to We don't need to push SI. Then we're going to do pop DI, pop DX, pop BX. So it could be that our registers are getting clobbered because I'm a, I'm not that great with this. No, but that's still good practice to uh, handle our registers there. Although it looks like I've done it wrong. Oh, that's right. I didn't. I should more like be this. Which is kind of horrible. Is that really my kid? What? No, that's just Kaz. He's, he's weird. Don't be like Kaz. We can remove state disconnect. Yeah, it is hilarious. Then there's state quit. So we don't need that. We don't need state disconnect. We can just quit. What? You're gonna get me on some... I'm gonna have to pay money to have it. Someone's going to be claiming child support by the end of the stream, and I can't afford that. I see why I did the state disconnect. Something is happening here, and it is confusing me. Um, what? What's just happened? Oh. That's weird. Misaka's child support payments? No. What the hell? This should be DX. Thanks for the follow, Seb Hoss. I'm not writing it in Phasm, I'm using NASM. All right. DX should be the line buffer length. I was moving AX. And then state append line. What the fuck is happening in my chat? Why is it happening in my chat? Whatever. Not going to worry about it. So we're in state skip line. BX is the amount left in the packet. 
and we run state get get packet if that's what we do then we move di with the line buffer and dx with the length and then we jump back to a pen line like we get out of this state i think unless it's eating the entire packet which might be the case what the hell rep e scas b what does that mean repeat Oh, is it repeat until? All right. I think I figured it out. Um, and then we're also going to print something. Um, we're actually going to print the part of the long line, I guess. Um, Although we also have state print there. We should probably make this a function we call. Um, called print packet. Or something. Whatever. I'll fix that up later. But we fixed it. We now have it dropping long lines. Maybe? Did I not W make that? Why is the line not long enough now? Uh oh. Oh no, okay, that works now. Wait, what? It only says Hetty Spaghetti. It should be saying ping, so the code is not working. It's just saying Hetty Spaghetti. So. Thirty three. It says Hetty Spaghetti. It shouldn't be saying that, it should be saying ping or something. So repne is not the solution. It's a trap. Do we get here? Hmm. We might have to open up the debug. Probably. All right, we want to break. ASM run, let's find that. And let's go to it. For God's sake. I wish I knew how to use this. What a sad turn of events. Please. Code. File exit, I guess. Um, F. 
it was an F5. Um, there was a command thing. Oh yeah, that's right. Break ASM run. We'll run to that. And then, oh, it has debug info now, kind of. We're going to run to cursor. Then we're going to view our registers. And we're going to just step through, through this. It only runs once. Why was CX zero? Oh, it is a single instruction. I am a Jingjong. Oh God, that sounds racist. Oh, whatever. Um, let's just break, toggle, run, restart. I'm not racist. I don't, not that racist. Why is this so difficult? Oh wait, we can probably use line numbers. So where are we on this? Um, we want to break at state.assembly line 99. Um, can we break using a source file? Listen to your son, dad. What? Just wants what's best for you. What is happening? <laughs> dad, please. No racist. What? Okay, let's break on assembly run. Uh, let's go down to our repne. All right, run to cursor. Okay, window. CPU registers, AX is zero, BX is 21, um, and DX should be zero, correct. All right. Now we're going to look at the window. Um, we're going to look at data, memory at, um, I think it's, SI Hetty Spaghetti and we want to get until this. So let's go back to our window of source and do space and let's do window um, I have a feeling I already know what the problem is. I think, I think maybe SCASD isn't, isn't like, where's my registers? So DI is now 309D, which would put us at three, Oh, uh, wait, what? 
DI is 389D. Uh, no, I hit the space button. Oh. Ugh. Why did bad things happen to me? Okay. <sighs> okay. Data memory at DS. 309D. There's nothing there. It's... Open state.assembly. Help. <sighs> okay, file. View. Um but it doesn't have i want all files please okay can i break here no it just opens up a window um okay code images threads assembly source how do i change the source code Uh. All right, let's just run this and then we will break down at the repne again. Um, run to cursor. What? What's happened? Oh, it froze. It froze. Um, run trace in two, that's F8. Then we want to run to cursor. All right, window, CPU registers. Wait, there's a modules thing down there. I'm on state. Okay, don't get distracted. So we have DI, which is 307C. Um, data, so Alt-6. Um, then we're going to look at DSDI. No, it would be... What? Oh, that's SI. Going to look for... DSSI, and then we're going to go to our code again. I'm going to go space, and then we're going to do the same thing. So DSSI. Uh, did I not do it properly? I didn't. Okay. Wait, what was that? I hit a button that briefly let me control a window. Okay, whatever. Um, data memory at DS um, SI. It's still at the uh, Hetty Spaghetti. It hasn't moved the pointer. I closed DOSBox by accident, I think. Um, 
Let's just verify that though. Um, let's go to modules. All right. So that's how you switch between files, I guess. Using the modules thing. I figured it out, guys. But now we're cooking with gas. Um, and then we want to run to cursor, which is F7. And then we want to view our CPU registers. So DI 307C, 390. So it has actually gone up. So let's just go through this state get packet. Wait, what? Why did it? That's confusing as heck. It shouldn't have done that. It should have stopped. Damn. Something strange is happening here. Well, I'm fast now. Okay, not fast enough. That has frozen. Let me check how much hard drive space I have left. I'm doing okay. What did I just do to myself? I went to the wrong directory. That's fine. Okay. Window. CPU registers. So data. Memory at it would be um, DSSI. And so the next zero A would be at, I don't know how to get the canonical address for that, but um, it, would, it should run until there. So let's see, let's go back to our CPU registers. So 309D, DS, SI, SI hasn't changed. Is it using a different register than I thought it would be? DI has changed to 309D. Data memory at DS 309D. Um, data memory at um, SI. DI is 309D, DS is 2300. Why? It's changing DI. Okay, that's that's the answer. So repne 
So we're looking for SCAS B. Sorry, SCAS. Wait, what's comps? Okay, that's not it. So SCAS uses the DI register. All right, well, we're gonna have to um, exchange SIDI between that. That's kind of weird, but let's try. Um, that is frozen. Okay, that works. We did it. Overly long lines get dropped. Um, so what next? I'm not your dad. What the hell? How you not understand this? How do you not get this? No, no, my nightmare. My son is so proud of me. Well, I guess I have to accept it. Son, I... Okay, so let's talk a bit about calling conventions and stuff. Um, most functions take like va uh, various registers and maybe now isn't the time to talk about this. Maybe when you're older, um, I'll explain what calling conventions are. Um, the one thing I do want to kind of point out is that um, this state machine um, doesn't like push anything on the return stack. Uh, one thing that's cool to think about is if... Um, yeah, I exchanged these. For some reason, Scaspy uses DI. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, these are all kind of function calls if you think that pushing the return value onto a stack is just another parameter to a function, and I'm not doing that. Probably. Um, can we do variables in registers now? Is that a thing? No. Nazem local local variables. Yeah, so you can put variables on the stack. That's pretty cool. Um, so we have our line buffering done. I guess now we just need to do our ping thing. What's in to do here? Wow, that's old. Yeah, so we're gonna, what's in this test.c? Um, I don't know what that is. Just cleaning out some junk. I think I deleted two things there. 
Um, wait, that was another notes file. What's in that one? Oh, yeah, I'll leave that there. In case I ever need that again. All right, so... Kodo. Um, we have some code here. Um, and what this actually should do is um, call something when it's time to um, dispatch a command. So what we were going to do is we're going to do call dispatch command. Um, yeah, um, so we have our null terminated thing. We have our line buffer. We have our length. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a dispatch command that right now just prints stuff. Dispatch line. Um, then we're going to push. We'll pass. Um, we'll pass a string using um, the SI register and CX. That seems fine. So dispatch line is just going to print stuff for now. And we will pass it using SI and CX. So we're going to have to do dispatch line and then just play with some registers real quick. So we move DI to null to terminate it. We set up the buffer and length. Um, and then we can just, I guess, once again, exchange DI and SI. Um, just for that. And then we should have it printing lines now. But we have to... X should X jag X should more like X chug state print um, state dispatch All right, that looks good. Um, not quite good because the packet count for ping hello world is 481, the size there. Uh, was that like that before and I just missed it because I, I'm not particularly attentive when programming? Or is this a change? No, that is, that is definitely a bug introduced by this code. Um, so AX has the length. So we're passing SI and CX. I think it would be CX and SI. Oh, I'm popping the wrong registers. There we go. So it's now time to create another assembly assembly file, I think. Um, and we're going to put in our bot code. 
Oh, what a lovely day. Um, I think bot is here. Yeah. Drive C code. So that is our state. It's time to put in, I guess, logic. We're finally here, kind of. Uh, we're going to have to separate some of this about. Um, this is going to be a little bit difficult. But basically, we're going to have that. And we're going to have that. Remove that. And we're going to make this a global, I think. We have printf, and we're not going to worry about buffering. Um, we're not going to log output or anything. Um, and then in state.assembly, which we already have open, we're going to do um, extern dispatch line. And then we will just remove that and we'll remove the incoming thing. And then we will edit our make file, which we already have open somewhere. Um, we will just copy this then call it um, logic.assembly. These are very vague names. Um, and let's see if this works. Dispatch line is an undefined reference. Why is that? Oh. I think I need to put it above the declaration. Or perhaps I haven't added it to the list of stuff. Let's also remove the printf thing from this page. We don't need that. Okay. Um, where's the make file? Is it this one? So where we have bot obj, we need to add, um, logic dot obj. Um, let's try w make now. Login message not defined. Why am I doing login? Okay, I cut that off there. Dispatch line is an undefined reference. It shouldn't be. I put that there, extern dispatch line, global dispatch line, do I need to put it a thing under it? Or maybe I need to link it in a different order. That shouldn't matter. Wait, I didn't put a capital L there. Maybe that's my problem. Hey, so the first thing we need to do is start working to respond to pings.
So, oh, we also need um, send send packet. Um, And actually, we'll move some of this down here. So we will put our login stuff in here. And we'll do global do auth. And we'll have our send packet code, I guess, in here. Um, extend send packet. And then we will have, uh, we will call dispatch auth. And this will have dispatch auth. And then we'll just return. And then, yep. And then at the top here, we'll put SI equals um, input, um, CX equals length. And then dispatch auth uses AX and BX. Send packet uses um, message and then BX equals length. What is all this here? Oh, uh, it grabs a buffer and then it copies it. There's a lot of shuffling here. You know what we could do here? We could just set the registers. So we do move, um, move SI. Um, yeah, let's have this use SI and CX. Um, and at the start over here, we'll also set ES and BX. Um, push BX, not BX. Yeah, there we go. We'll set the ES that way. And then that means we can just do this. Move um, CX SI. Move AX to DX, send packet. What do we need to 
move AX to DX for? So that should work. Let's see if this works. Dispatch auth. So the test should be able to check if this is actually all thing properly. Okay, sent packet length zero. That didn't work, did it? Um, we sent the length. We moved SI with the login message. Current send buffer. What does current send buffer do? Oh, we need to request the length, the length. Move AX, CX, right, 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 right. Wait, and that fails, it jumps to state quit. That's not good. Cause that shouldn't be allowed to do that. We'll just return zero. Um, I think. Although this is kind of bad code at this point, it should just be, yeah, let's undo most of this. Um, we want our logic code to be pure and not touching packets or anything. It has to be pure. We're in pure land. We've ascended. In fact, no. If we're in pure land, then maybe we should return um, a buffer to send. Yeah, so what we should do then is do call send packet. Let's make the send packet use um, CXN SI though. And then we'll do this thing here. Dump that up here. We won't bother playing with registers like that. Um, pushing them. Wait. Sent packet shouldn't be able to jump to state quit. That should return.
maybe that's the weird bug we've been having. Um, so compare AX zero. Um, and then if it's zero, we jump to exit. Otherwise we copy it. And then we pass back AX. Gnome feet, uh, I don't like that. And this should just be jump, compare it zero. This should be jump greater than, uh, jump. What's less than or equal? Um, less than conditional jumps. Do you like your mate's feet? What? Compare zero AX jump. God, this is going to confuse me, but I need to figure this out. So the error code is either zero or less than, less than zero. So we want to only jump if it's not positive. Jump if not above. There. which means we can just do this. And dispatch line How would we return something from there? Will you return to the assembly after Jukebot is truly birth? No. So we have our exchange here. Um, compare AX zero. How are we going to return a line? Oh, I know what I could do. We could, we could return the length. Um, we could return the length in CX. Um, so what we could do is, um, compare CX, um, zero. Um, and then we will um, we will do if CX is not zero, like jump above. Um, then we if uh, wait no jump equal finish and then we will call send packet so we can return a packet to send 
And right now this should just return the same packet back. Or not. Okay. All right. Wait, by setting CX to that, no, that should work. Because we're reusing the line buffer. Sent packet length zero. Let's remove this smart code I just added. So now it's not sending the login message. Sent packet zero cleaning up. RC zero. So we sent a packet of length zero. Wait, send new buffer may return zero, might it? No, send new buffer should send the length sent, shouldn't it? What? Move AX to DI. Yeah. And then we have SI. And then we move it. We call send new buffer. And then we return AX. Move SI, move CX, call it. What does state quit do? Let's just remove this jump not above thing for now. We'll just assume it works. No, that was not a good idea. So it's, it is not working. What is happening? Okay, we need to debug this. I'm just pressing everything. All right, um, window modules. Let's go down to state and let's go to send packet. So what do we have here? CX is 44, AX is 18. Current send buffer should give us a buffer. That's fine. We set AI to DI. We copy from SI to DI and we call send new buffer, which doesn't have the correct arguments. And it fails.
There we go. This should work. Mob. The mob is getting me. No, that didn't work. Of course not. Maybe DX is the second argument. I don't remember the calling convention. All right, let's undo all this and look at how the code used to look like. So that's the current stuff. The previous code would do AX equals the length, BX equals the message. So BX would go to SI um, and ES. Wait, when we call send new buffer, What are we putting in the, what are we putting in the water? DX. I think it might be DX and the packet would be AX. So let's put that there as DX. Sent packet length 68. Well, that's good. And then it returns zero. That can't be right. Unless send new buffer does not return the length sent. I forget my own API here. All right, it only zero. Okay, zero is good. What? So zero good for send new buffer, zero bad for current send buffer. That makes sense. So if it's AX, we will just jump. If it's AX, we can just return. Um, all right, yeah, so let's do, um, compare AX zero jump zero. Then here we have jump equal finish. Call send packet, jump zero, state quit. Let's see if this works. What? Oh, jump. Oh no. Jump not zero. 
So this should be jump not zero. And this should return um, um, if it's not zero here, we'll jump to continue and then continue can be here. And then we will return 10 because why not? Okay. That's bad, that hung. Shouldn't be hanging like that. Oh, unable to connect to host. So does the bot fail there? Why is that failing? Testing login, so. Let's try restarting that. You know, what we might want to do is set the timeout to be a second. Because five seconds is an eternity. Although I still think it froze somehow. So that seems to work. Um, and so the final thing today, I guess, will be um, our first logic for the ping. And this is gonna be quick and dirty. We basically want to go um, hmm. We want to check if the first character is ping. So the first character is a P. So let's compare um, S I P. Um, and if it's not equal, then we will just um, not ping. But if it is equal, we will move um, SI plus one. Ping. Actually, we'll do move um, AXP. And we'll just do men ASCII and P should be capital P. Gnome conferences must be smelly. Why? So we're going to try and do a pong now. Let's try and get our pong working. I don't even know if that's valid syntax. No. What's that say? Operation symbol not ping not defined. Ah. <gasps> So let's 
send outgoing then. What is the E at the end of that? We don't need that. The hell? Let's do W make um, print format two. <sighs> All right, so let's go to our test code. Of course, this is not a good heuristic for testing if something is a ping command. Um, so let's see, ping, we want to read if the response is pong, but that's, that's not happening. Is that because, oh, that's right. Uh, we're not adding R and N at the end. All right. We're not terminating it with a um, zero D zero A, which does make you think, you know, um, hmm. Come on, cat. Out. What do we do about this? Um, Bye, cat. So, do we want to reuse the line buffer? Probably not. So let's do something a bit smarter and have our response buffer. Response buffer. We'll call it a resp buffer. So we're not going to touch the line buffer. Instead, we're going to do a response buffer. And so what we're going to do, um, so the first attempt we're going to do is create a function called do ping. And what we're going to do is have it return um, pong a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, j, k, l, m, n, p, q, r, s, t, v, w, x. Um, and we'll just remove move that as the Pong thing. And we will return that. Um, so let's see, Pong. Move SI Pong, move CX Pong message length return. Login message. Uh, it would be Pong message. 
I guess I should put this as Pong message. Line buffer not defined. Oh yeah, this would be response buffer. So what does this do? Wait, that's not correct either. Zero A, it should be R N. So that should be zero D zero A. And then zero times the zero zero. And what does it do now? It gives us an error. It cannot concat string to bytes. Where, where does it do that? Let's turn off the exception thing here. Actually, can we do Python print exception backtrace? Wait, using print exception? Print x. Import traceback traceback dot print x. Yeah, let's try that. There we go. Um, so what's it say? Can't concat string to bytes. There's a lot of weird stuff happening here. Let's try printing the password. See if we can replicate that error. So what's happening here? It's sometimes dropping the password. Testing login user it gets that first yeah we need to start printing um our read line print line incoming s there we go Can't, conta can't concat string to bytes. What does that even mean? Can't concat string to bytes. So read line must be giving a string. Oh, I see. 
All right. So we need to do decode UTF-8 here. And then we need to drop the R there. I see. So this should be working now. Sometimes it's not sending the, it's not getting. And sometimes that is not working. That's frozen. Hmm. So we sent our packet and it's getting the nick instead. What's happening here? Okay, that works. Receive zero. It got a null for some reason. And then the pass stuff. And in this case, it's only getting user and then Nick. How, how does that happen? I'm perhaps I'm consuming it earlier. How would that possibly happen? So it gets Nick there. It gets password. User, Nick, it gets null, pass, Like a null, a null thing gets put at the start of it. I think I've made a mistake here. Um, read line should not be decoding anything. There. Pass, zero, zero, pass. So it's sending two passwords. Pass R. Okay, let's remove that, both the R and the N. Hang on, no. I'm printing it in the wrong part. Uh, 
And then in receive buffer fill, buffer, and then we print the receive buffer. Wait a second. This isn't being reset between connections. That makes sense. Kind of? That doesn't make sense there. This still isn't making sense. Oh, I'm not setting the global receive buffer. Something, something global's bad. There we go. Kind of. We still don't have our Pong stuff going. And we're sending a null byte, which isn't great. We'll have to strip that. Will printf be able to handle that? Let's read the manual for printf real quick. Yeah, that just uh, spams everything there. All right, uh, men and printf. Um, so can we specify the length of a string? If a precision is specified, so precision, So let's search up C print string explicit length. So this perhaps? Let's see if Whatcom supports that. And that would mean we can stop null terminating stuff too.
Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Tight. Okay, so let's just also see what the test server will say. Command pass. Yeah, okay. Pass user Nick Pong. Okay, so the next thing to do. Should I copy the the end to the thing? I feel like I should. Yeah, there should always be room for a value. Yeah, so I'm actually just leaving an empty value in the buffer possibly. You should always do whatever you want. Oh, Kaz. But that also means we can skip with the Pong thing there. We can drop the Pong. We can drop the response buffer for now. Um, and all do ping has to do, we can drop do ping. And we just have to move SI plus one by O. Oops. And then let's see how that goes. So why did that fail? I might have to look at the uh, add a print for the buffer. to see what's happened here. Um, what? That should be correct. Command should be Pong underscore hello world. Maybe it's just not able to compare tuples by value in Python. Yay! And then let's also remove the new lines from there.
So we've added a ping thing. What we can actually probably do is do PI and change that to word and just be like, yeah, uh, that's PI. Unless it's supposed to be IP. Yep, okay. And then it sends length 18. So we've got ponging done. So what does this actually mean for us? Well, it means we could probably, hmm. Yeah, I've got about half an hour left. Let's try connecting this to Twitch. Um, or an actual IRC server. Let's do that first. Connecting it to Twitch is going to be a bit more complicated because we'll have to make the login message. Um, you know, we could actually just read the login message from a file. That would solve our problems, right? We read that from a file and then we just send that. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, we could probably also load like the IP address from the file. Um, let's go here. All right, so this is the actual IRC server that we have locally. Um, let's try messaging it. And let's see if it responds to pings. So we get a priv message. Although in a real IRC server, it looks like they prepend the server at the start of the message. And then, hmm, it has like 372, 372. And three seven six. Let's see. I see a message format. Let's see what Wikipedia says. I guess we should look in the actual protocol spec. It's not going to see the ping, is it? Because it's just going to see the server. And then shootbot. No, okay, that does work. So the server must be sending something. So we managed to pong properly. Nice. So that must be the sender at the start. If there is one. Then the command maybe?
Yes, the Pongs. Pseudo B and F. What's it say over here? Nothing. Spot on. Napping. Um, that does not have a MOTD command either. So IRC priv message host. All right, let's just see the prefix, the numeric code, All right, so this is like an IPC protocol. So what do we have? What has happened there? Pong, ping. Incoming. Pong? Um, what's happening here? What has happened there? We're getting an incoming with a very large packet. The incoming says it's Pong. What's 372? RPL moded. So what is RPL? Um, let's search up. It doesn't really explain what RPL is. Do I need to look at the thing here? Numerics. Numeric replies. So we're not handling numeric replies. So the second Pong manages to mess things up, maybe? So 
So it looked like, yeah, so the general syntax is origin command um, username, I guess that's destination, which is me. So that's from to new packet length 46. So we're having some buffer problem. Incoming, which means we're getting it from an actual place. So when we send a Pong, it seems we get a Pong back. Or is this because we somehow corrupt things with a Pong? And now the next packet is going to be broken. Yeah, that looks like what's happening. But that's strange because we don't see, oh no. Okay, yeah, so Pong is somehow messing things up. Can we add a test for that? Let's have a look. We will be returning SI and CX. I'll worry about that another time. Um, Pong corrupts, let's do a to do. I'm not gonna log any state transitions. Um, we don't need that. We don't need to log output, do we? Maybe. Um, return null if send buffer is empty. Watchdog timeout, that wouldn't be in here. Read password from file. Read login sequence from file to do read host name from file. Yeah, because that's not null terminated. Gotcha. Um, so we have, let's read through this a little bit while we still have some time. All right, so yeah, IRC is a federated. We have channels. Let's look at the protocol. Client to server protocol, CRLF should use UTF-8, that's what we're doing. Um, RN. We should ignore empty messages. So we have a message with possibly an at tags and space. 
then we have a uh, so there's possibly an at and multiple spaces. Uh, so we're gonna have to start writing a parser or something. Um, that's the structure of an IRC message. So we have the tags, we have source, we have command parameters or whatever. Um, perhaps that's the tags there. I'm not sure. Um, so at tags, I don't know what a tag is. Then we have a source, possibly multiple spaces. Um, so we can just use that as a skip. And then we have commands, parameters, and CRLF. Um, so, tags are used for capabilities. So does Twitch have IRC capabilities that we need to care about? Let's your bot specify pre-message commands that include chat commands and Twitch specific IRC messages. Um, okay, let's see. Oh dear. Oh no, there is a lot of things going there. Um, are we going to try passing that? Probably not. Um, so we're just going to quit if there are tags. Um, do we need to worry about the source? Probably. So my palm didn't actually properly send there. Twitch relies with the standard ac com uh, sub command. So we probably want commands. Like that. Um, yeah, so we probably want to grab the cap. Then we have tmi.twitch.tv. Um, let's see, joining a chat room. That uses join. That does those responses.
What is that? Why is there a 353 bar equals whatever? Okay, whatever. It's probably just... It's whatever. Sending and receiving chat messages. Let's look at that. Um, yep. And so then we have the host name. If you want to reply to a chat message, you need to get the ID. Okay, so that's replying to that. We can go with that, that for now. So it's foo at foo, what? Oh, so yeah, so the first is the user and then, then there's the prove message and then the bar and then the channel. So let's just add that as a note. Um, user command channel text. All right. Um, are we going to see what the, there's display name? Do we want to, do we really want to try and read display name from stuff? Um, hmm. I guess for now we will worry we will worry about it later. Using Twitch commands. Yep, we got that. Membership commands. If you request the commands capability, you should um, always grab the tags one. Clear message. Um, What's notice? God, so much easier.
Okay, so we have tags, we don't need that. Source can be a server name or nickname or whatever. We're gonna probably have to pass that if we ever need like a username. Servers may include a source, maybe, maybe not. Um, so the source is optional. So let's write that down. Optional source. Yep. Um, wildcard expressions, we don't need that, I don't think. It must send RPL welcome, all that. Oh, it has to send message of the day? Pathetic. Um, all right, let's grab that section. Um, yep, so let's just do that. Then we will look at sending multiple pings. I'm going to send three pings because right now we're having a bug where we're having a ping bug, as they say. So let's do bot. Oh, that's the wrong, wrong one. Take it down a port. Do we have any to do's here? Check if send buffer is null. Why would it be null? I mean, there's some to do's there. We don't need to worry about that. Okay, yeah, so we failed. Why? Why? Um, so when we do ping or whatever, it sends the ping. It does the CX. Hey, Aria, what's up?
Um, and then... How about when we finish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's swap that back. Uh, let's see if this helps. It does. All right. If I remove DI, does that fix it? No, so DI is being corrupted somehow. Probably by send packet. All right, or well, whatever. Um, you don't need to worry about DX there then. There we go. So let's see if that works now. With the local server. And then the stream shall be over. Let's also try Telnet localhost 6667. No more stream. So what do we get here? Um, we get one, two, three, four, five. So we kind of want to emulate this, I think. Um, and we'll put that in the logic assembly thing. I guess. Maybe. Can I do multiple line stuff? I'll just leave that there for now. That's going to cause errors, but whatever. So the server might respond with a whatever. And I assume that it might. So it sends welcome. Um your host created info is support more is support 251 Two five three, and there's the message of the day. So we'll have to send some stuff like that just for the bot testing. Yeah, IRC bot.
Wait, am I still connected here? Okay, so I do. Okay. So if we do pre of message jukebot hi two three four, yeah, it should get it. Let's just quickly look up what the user command is. User and Nick, and we're also going to look at um, MOTD loses um, pre message and notice. Okay, so username zero. What? Zero star. So should we be changing that to zero star? Um, I guess we'll do user zero star. We'll write that down. There's the ping message and then there's the pong message. Nick, nickname. So we should also look out for the error messages. So error messages start, there's a lot of error messages I see. Hmm. I think we can probably skip error checking for the most part. Although we probably should have some way to handle go to bed aria if you're sleepy. He 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 some way to handle um, login errors. Prove message. Notice message. Wait, prove message. We probably need to put a colon. in front of it. Mm -hmm. Later skater.
So if there's no source, we can just ignore it, right? Ignore if no source. But yeah, we probably do need log output for debugging. Okay, so I think we have kind of an idea about what to do. Um, probably should also send quit. And I guess this is going to be our dispatch table. Um, so we will dispatch based on the first two letters of a word, I guess. Let's look at, look at the commands we're going to probably handle. Um, actually, no, this isn't going to work. Oh no, it will. Um, we'll just have to skip this first. The two letters should be unique unless it's a number. Cause we have prove message and that's about it. All right, well, that's the stream for today. Hmm. We got some stuff done. Later. Actually, there's just one last thing I need to check. The scares command doesn't read from the source register, does it? No, it doesn't. I'm just going to assume it doesn't. All right, later.